Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Unleashing Potentials podcast. So joining me today is Kalina, all the way from Toronto, Canada. Welcome. Thank you for having me today. I'm excited to be here. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited to have you too. Um, So what's the weather like in Toronto? I know here it's wet and rainy and cloudy. (laughs) Um, Here it's always sunny. For the most part, it's not that bad compared to Calgary. Mm -hmm. So we get a lot of sun. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah, so happy to have you on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Kalina, can you tell us more about you and uh, your story? Definitely. Uh, Hi, everybody. My name is Kalina, aka Deaf Queen Boss. Um, Honestly, my journey started when I actually became deaf at the age of four. Mm. Um, Yeah, so I actually did become deaf at the age of four due to an infection. And, you know, all the way up until I got to high school, I did struggle a lot with my mental health and also communicating with the hearing community. So this is where it shifted me into my career path where I wanted to help the hearing, the, the hearing community and the deaf community to learn how to put a band-aid on it. So this is where I became a mental health coach mm-hmm. uh, for disability people to help them, to uplift them, and also help them learn how to advocate for, them, for themselves. Mm-hmm. And second, I'm a best-selling author on Amazon. My book is called Every Day I Am Just Deaf. And third, I am an international speaker. So I spoke over the world. I spoke over 150 podcasts, like a lot of podcasts. And yeah, so that's pretty much about me. Oh, wow. I'm so happy to have you to talk on my podcast because I think uh, this is a topic that needs to be talked about. Um, I, I've, I'm not deaf and I can't say I understand what it feels like. Um, I'm happy you're coaching people and advocating what it's like. What was it like for you growing up, going to school and, and feeling different from the other kids? It was tough. It was tough, I'm not going to lie. Um, It was very difficult where I had to advocate for myself as a young girl. Mm. And you're thinking that teachers would know how to accommodate a student where they did not. Mm. And it was so hard because I had to be emotionally drained to tell the teacher, hey, hey, hey. And eventually I give up and I never bother. And it was sad in that point. And on the side note, I also would bullied a lot in school. Uh, I had people walk all over me thinking they can talk bad up to me because, you know, I'm a deaf person. And, you know, people will always like, talk about me and, because they thought I couldn't hear them. Um, but overall, I did have great support system, uh, family who supported me, make sure I had everything I need to get done. Um, but not until high school, I was felt more comfortable within myself and I know what I needed. So I feel like my confidence increased a lot in terms of making friends, so. Mm, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry you were bullied. I find that it's there's a pandemic of that. Uh, it's just, it's still going on. And um, in your opinion, I've also been bullied with racial uh, stuff and whatnot. But in your opinion, how can we talk about bullying and do something about it. What, what do you think can be done? Um, honestly, continue having a conversation and discussion in your home. Mm-hmm. It's always super important to have a discussion, even though it's uncomfortable. I know, you know, the younger generation prefers to talk about it on social media. You know, nowadays, social media is insane. And just always be honest with your child. Always be honest with your kid. Mm-hmm. And for the education system part, for them, I feel like they need to be consistent talking about it. I feel like they will talk about it for one month and then where's the rest of the topic, you know? They just, mm-hmm. so sometimes students just feel like that's what it is and it's not fair. Mm-hmm. And so students need to understand that, sorry, students need to understand that they need guidance, they need support. And I feel like without that having consistently talking about bullying, mm-hmm. how are we going to do that? How? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. And the lasting impact of bullying is, is long. 
it can be lifetime it impacts us even as we grow up into adults and have responsibilities um there are things that can trigger it at any time at any point so thank you uh, i feel that. like as soon as i got older it just you just need to reteach yourself certain things than you did in school mm -hmm. and i feel like some people don't want to reteach themselves about the reality of real life <laughs> outside of school and again we don't have the right support because our family could be old-fashioned our family may not be catching up with the new norm of the society mm -hmm. or sometimes our parents you know sometimes we don't feel comfortable talking to people about it mm -hmm. and for me personally when i was growing up like it's hard to take responsibility for yourself especially you're so used to having your mom and dad you know mm -hmm. <laughs> but it can be hard mm -hmm. yeah you're right uh, so in school, did you have a favorite subject that kind of carry you through and brought you joy? I would say drama class because you're so oh. much free time and you just you just be yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I always loved art class or they put me in the choir. I had to do performance. I swear I almost passed out because I'm not uh, a people person, but I've grown into into that. Yeah, that's awesome. Drama class. Did you do acting or singing? Yeah, I did. I cannot sing at all. Don't ever ask me to sing. Oh my God, I cannot. <laughs> I remember my teacher tried to make me sing. I'm like, I cannot sing. Like, no. And I used to do choir too, but I used to pass out a lot in choir. I don't know why. I think there's too many people staring at me and I was just like, no way. Mm -hmm. uh, but I did a lot of acting because my drama teacher made it really fun. She didn't make it just... Mm -hmm strictly about the school curriculum she made it really fun oh nice that's awesome um growing up who did you look up to uh my grandma Daphne my grandma she was also an immigrant grandma mm -hmm. and I think we all have an immigrant back home um so my grandma was born and raised in St. Lucia um so she actually you know motivated me to be within myself um mm -hmm. And while I became deaf, my grandma was actually a nurse. So luckily she was able to take care of me and be able to um, support me when I what I needed. My mom was a young adult, so she didn't know what to do. I'm her first kid. So my mom was nervous, she was terrified. She's like, oh my God, what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> um, so I feel like my grandma was someone that I could like look up to. And you know, she does a lot in person. And like, she was hustling, working three, four job, um, which inspired me because I would like, I'm going to be like my grandma. I'm going to be a hustler. I'm going to be busy. Like she was just so funny and she was just amazing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, how would you describe yourself to people who doesn't know you? I am very energetic. I am always smiling. <laughs> I love to talk time, time, not all the time, but it really depends, but I can be shy at time. Mm -hmm. Um, um i can i love nature so if you invite me out to nature I'm like hey Kalina, let's go on a venture let's go do this that, that i'm always i'm all down to earth so mm -hmm. that's awesome uh yeah what is one of your biggest inspiration what what is it okay mm -hmm. um i would say i was able to write a book at the age of 25 mm -hmm. um Maya Angelou, um, I think it was her post that kind of inspired me because my grandma loved Maya Angelou uh, advice and poetry and my grandma used to read them to me and I was like, hmm. So now that I'm older, I was able to write a book and inspire other people to know that they're not alone in the world. Mm -hmm. I love, love Maya Angelou. I love her. I read her her books sometimes. It's a doesn't love her like I think every woman in the black community I think we all love my Angela yeah yeah you're right um so you're a deaf coach um do you find that there are a lot of coaches like yourself no there isn't <laughs> every time I introduce myself everybody's like wait what and I was like yeah why and honestly i actually did my research before i became a coach myself mm -hmm. and i realized that there's not a lot of deaf professional in the medical field mm -hmm. it's very rare to see same thing with 
an author. There's not a lot of deaf authors out there at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right about that. Um, I can only imagine, you know, for someone who's deaf, uh, trying to communicate uh, where there isn't people who understand them. That itself can be traumatizing, maybe in some healthy ways and also negative ways as well. Yeah. Um, do you find that sometimes in your journey, you know, talking to people, did they misunderstand you or looked at you different because of what you have? You know, yeah. Of course. Of course. There's a lot of things that people do when they talk to me. Mm -hmm. People assume that I know ASL. People thought they couldn't communicate with me because they thought I don't speak. And a lot of people always think that if you are a deaf person, you cannot speak, you know? And there are so many ways people can communicate nowadays. Um, but for me, I know that, I remember one time I was in the store or something, and then my hair was in a ponytail. You could see my hair in it, I don't care. And the guy was just like shocked and he was just like, mm. I'm like, can I get my food? And he's like, oh, sorry, when did you get it? I'm like, wow. So it's kind of like, it's my, it's, I don't know, it's kind of weird in a way, but mm -hmm. sometimes it can be very difficult to communicate with someone who have an accent. Um, because myself, it can be difficult to understand someone with a very, very strong accent. Mm -hmm. Well, I can understand you very well. So thank you for coming on to tell your story. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have a podcast as well? No, I actually don't. A lot of people have been telling me to do it to talk about like my life story. And I'm just like, I don't know if I have the time yet because I do have a lot on my plate right now. I do have a lot of opportunity coming up. So I'm just like, mm -hmm. I don't I have time, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely time consuming, but worth it, definitely. Yeah, okay. Did yeah. you ask? Like, <laughs> it's worth it. Um, so you said that you're a podcast speaker. Does that mean you, you speak on other podcasts to share your story? Oh, okay. Yeah, right. yeah. okay. That's awesome. Uh, tell me about your books. Is it books or book? Okay. Just one book. Yes. One. One. Okay. okay. I did have a collaboration book with another friend of mine. Mm -hmm. So that one's called Young Change Me. Well, sorry, Young Changers. Uh, so my book is about me being deaf every day daily baked it it's a poetry mm -hmm. book i love poems thanks to maya angelou mm -hmm. and so i just talk about really my personal life what it's like to be deaf um how i'm feeling what can we learn from my story what can we do better and um and yeah it, it, it is published it's on amazon oh nice i i love poetry i write too um <clears throat> people say i should write a book but i don't know anything about writing <laughs> uh, <laughs> like a writing a book but uh yeah i i dabble into lots of different stuff that's really cool yeah um yeah so you're helping young adults with disabilities that is a really good niche to go into i believe because so many young adults need need help and guidance exactly a lot don't me think i feel like the more the years go i feel like the more like the increase the number of mental health along the younger generation is like through the roof mm -hmm. you know I related a lot than I thought mm -hmm. and so it's I'm very unfortunate there's not a lot of support system out there unfortunately mm -hmm. yeah you're right and it's sad to hear that because there are lots of deaf people who are part of society who deserves to be part of society and they deserve to be heard and uh, treated with respect and equality, right? I find that I'm not deaf, but I've seen, you know, people trying to sign language and, and, and speak or, or blind. I've seen how they're treated and it truly is unfair. Mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. Uh, give me some scenarios of how you would help uh, your community uh, in terms of learning what it is like to be deaf. I would say that the first thing I'd be doing was definitely um, reaching out to different communities. Mm -hmm. So I do participate mm -hmm. in the deaf community. Mm -hmm. uh, second, which I'm doing right now, picking up my ASL all over again, because I did used to learn ASL when I went to the deaf school. Mm -hmm. And uh, the third thing is going on different podcasts 
and just really speaking about the about the deaf community and really getting myself out there with different types of people, not just within the deaf community, but more into the hearing community so that they understand and know what they need to do better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, it sounds like you're doing a fantastic job. Thank you. I try. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And, and trying counts. And I appreciate that you're doing that. I, I'm um, attracted like magnet to people like you who are um, spreading seeds of hope and inspiring, educating people. So good job. <laughs> Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we've had smoke here. That's why I could clear my throat. It's, it's cleared out. It's not as bad. Um, oh. Uh, the smoke that was happening in Calgary. How is that going? Um, it's been cold. There's lots of rain. It's nice and cool. I like it. Um, but yeah, the kind of lingers a little bit. You can't really smell smell it, but it's sort of sort of there. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I. I. I can't imagine. You know, being deaf at four. Did you find that it it was challenging for your parents to find different accommodations in school and programs for you? Oh yeah, it was very difficult. Um, however, it wasn't too difficult than people would have think, just because my grandma is a nurse herself. Mm-hmm. And I had a really great support from my audiologist. So they were the one that recommend a lot of programs for me and about the deaf school. And um, they offer a lot of support. Um, I would say that if I did not, build a really good relationship with my audiologist, I would not be here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Yeah. Um, Can you tell us what is ASL, sorry, for people who don't know what that stands for? Stephanie, ASL stands for American Sign Language. It is uh, the deaf community first language. Mm -hmm. So we actually use our hand to speak Mm -hmm. and communicate. Okay, do you, do you speak it fluently? No, not yet. But okay. I know the basics in terms of conversation. Hi, my name is Kalina. And, and how are you? Um, mm. I'm starting to say feelings and emotion right now. So we're such guy. Okay, I, 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 I tried to learn it. Um, it's very fascinating, I find. Can you say something so you can teach us something? I can, I can, hello, hello. And then my name, so this means my name. <laughs> yeah, like a gun, basically. My name. Okay. And then you have to go to the alphabet and then say your name. Oh. So my name is, mine is this is A E L L I N A. And my name is Lena. <laughs> oh, wow. That's so cool. How do you say thank you? Thank you. Thank you. I've seen people do like this. What does that um, it, there's so many ways of people doing it. It could be sorry, um, or this means hungry. This means hungry. Mm-hmm. Hungry. Yeah. Um, and this means mom. This means mom. Okay, mom. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh. Mom. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I was watching a show. Um, they they have a a deaf um. Uh, male on there uh from the u.s and um the way he speak it's it's so fast and fascinating and it's, i tried to cut uh, yeah <laughs> got lost in between it but it's really fascinating that's so cool do you teach people uh sign language as well or no 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 i need to be certificate certified sorry certified oh, be certified to do it oh i need to actually actually no more no no <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay okay oh nice and you have your bachelor's degree in psychology that's my favorite topic by the way really really i yes. love psychology but even though it can be a little complicated sometimes <laughs> yeah yeah anything with the psyche i love it psychology sociology i stay away from math i i'm not a math person <laughs> yeah, it's math math, it's math. but math not so much <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, what was it like for you when you were um, going to school to get your degree in psychology? Oh, okay. So honestly, going to post-secondary was not too bad. 
Mm -hmm. It was a lot more flexible for me because I actually had a note taker with me because the movie theater, I'm sorry, the lecture was like a movie theater. Every lecture I go to for psychology, it's huge. So I couldn't hear very well Mm -hmm. during um, some note taking. And I was like, oh my God, I can't hear. Um, So it was very hard. Mm -hmm. However, it was very difficult to have my professor wear a microphone for me. They Mm -hmm. feel uncomfortable and I don't know. It's just ridiculous. I was like, okay. Um, so I, if it wasn't for my note taker, I would not be passing the course at all, especially when it was big. No matter where I was in the classroom, sometimes I would pick it up, sometimes I would not. Mm-hmm. So it would be difficult. But I had um, a disability support counselor who helped me and guide me through all my university lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Um, so we built a really good relationship. So I was grateful that she was able to help me. Because in my first year, I actually failed because of this one teacher who did not want to accommodate me, unfortunately. And for some reason, I don't know why, like I, and it was a music class. I didn't mm-hmm. think we were listening to music. I thought we were studying music. Mm-hmm. And so he failed me because he thought I would take an advantage of my accommodation. Wow. That, that's mind-blowing, even though you would qualify to have the note-taker there. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I, I, w- I really wish some teachers um, <laughs> would get with the program, you know, to catch up a little bit, to say, hey, this is the year we're in, this is how things are done, and this is how it's going to go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> because everyone deserves to learn right? Doesn't matter if they can hear, can see, whatever it is, whatever the disability is, they deserve to be equal, to treat, to be treated equal and, and fairly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. exactly. And yeah. that's I feel like a lot of teachers don't think like that. Like, they go, yeah, like this student got an A. And I feel like a lot of professors just look at it as a number. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's sad. That's sad. I hope it changes. Me yeah. Too. Yeah. And also your post uh, graduate in mental health and addiction. What led you to go uh, that direction as well? Um, so because in Toronto, um, when you're in university, you don't have the hands on experience. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to be more into psychology because I didn't even know what I wanted to do after. Like I was like, okay, I'm graduating. Where am I going to go from here? I need a hand on experience. And it's very hard to get into anything with just graduating college or university in general. Graduating is super hard to get into anything. So I thought to myself, okay, why not just get into a college program that can help me get a job? And I was looking for a lot of psychology programs. They recommend um, behavior science, analyze, and then there's mental health. And I'm like, oh, maybe I can do mental health. Mm-hmm. And then so I just fell in love with the course, like what would we be taught? Because a lot of them, I didn't learn it from university, which is crazy. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go for this. So I was comparing my program, the program, and then I really like mental health more. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, I love mental health because I have mental health issues. <laughs> uh, it's very interesting. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Um, I'm always reading and, and um, devouring information on it. It's, uh, it's fascinating because I want to know what I have. So I'm reading about it. But it can be scary, though. You know how uh, social media or the news portrait mental, mental health. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Oh my God, I feel like social media is literally taking over. Honestly, no, because honestly, it's just so sad because people lie, people fake, and it's unbelievable because mm-hmm. that's the new norm, mm-hmm. you know, and social media is really taking over because the way how they're making technology now, iPad, Apple Watch, your phone now, it, you have to face it to unlock, and I was like, no. Yeah. So I guess I feel like because social media is trying to become cool and trying to look like the 2027 or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And and it's impacts a lot of our mental health because everything is fast paced. Everything mm-hmm. is fast paced. A lot of people are so behind in life because they cannot even keep up. And because also too, everything is going up. Mm-hmm. Everything is going up. People can't afford it. And that's why people use social media either one to make money. 
And I think that's the problem because people think it's easy to make money through social media, but people don't know how to use social media in the right way. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people just too busy on their phone. People don't understand or understand and realize how much time they do spend on the phone. I remember for me, I want to make eyes. I have to tell her, like, you've been on your phone way too much. And she didn't know it's not. And so luckily, iPhone had um, a time where it tells you how long you've been on your phone for. So mm -hmm. I tried to pull it out. Let's see. And she realized, and, oh my God. Yeah. So social media do really troll a lot of our mental health because we feel like we are behind. Mm -hmm. And it's just a new norm. Like, realistically, like, people need to learn how to balance between personal life, the mm -hmm. life, and mm -hmm. you know, taking care of yourself. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And to not let everything that we're seeing impact us, even though it does. Uh, I mean, on a personal level, it can does it can do quite a bit of damage if we let it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so you you went to a summit, or are you planning a summit, a conference? Can you tell me more? Yeah. Yeah. So I do them um, online. Okay. Uh, so um, it's a stomach for, it's called Alalai. It's for Alalai for people with disabilities. And so I spoke mm -hmm. on dating and disability. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why the topic was given to me, but I guess because of my personality. Um, so it was amazing because I was able to talk about how to build a healthy relationship. Having a disability, that's not easy because there's so much bear that you have to give to your partner mm -hmm. so I know people are afraid to get themselves out there because they feel like they're going to be used or disadvantaged mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh my goodness I'm not having a good morning <laughs> oh my throat um so what kind of people you find uh come to what you offer um so a lot of time I find it that people don't have the right support system right? They don't know how can they find that. It's so important that we do find that support system. Mm -hmm. And also, too, they don't under, people <laughs> starting to realize that friends, your peers, mm -hmm. they're affecting them. Mm -hmm. They don't realize until you go deep into a worksheet, work, workshop that I usually offer. I use the worksheet and we to work together and we're like, okay, well, what is it that you kind of focus on from your peers? Are you getting positive or negative from your peers? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of time, I think we feel like we tend to be nervous to let go of the most important people in our life who are negative to us and who cannot impact us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, so overall, what would you say one of the biggest challenges that you faced in the past and you're continuing to face today? I would just say the challenge I face is always being consistent within myself in terms of giving myself a break. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm always go, go, go sometimes because I do have a lot of things on my plate, um, but I need to learn how to take a break. And I feel like that's something that yeah. I learned hard way because I keep getting sick. And I'm like, oh, great, I'm sick again. So it's a sign of me to take a step back and take a break. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what? You're not alone, though. We live in a uh, fast-paced society where we, we have to always be on the go. If we don't go, we stop, then we're bored. And when really it's, you know, stepping back is healthy. So I, I'm, I'm glad you're realizing that you, you have your boundaries and knowing when to stop. I totally agree. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, I was saying we live in a very fast paced society. Everything is always going fast and go. And I said you have good boundaries to know when to stop or slow down. Yeah, great. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, would you recommend your career to other people and why? Um, it really depends on what career because I have so many career authors. <laughs> Which one? Which one are we talking? <laughs> um, let, let's, let's go with how you're helping uh, people and educating deaf uh, people about death. Okay. It sounds like okay. death. How do you say it? Yeah. Yeah, Eng English, man. Like English, death. not, not everybody. Yeah. yeah, death or death. Like, 
<laughs> you know what I mean, but it's just the way it is. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, for me, I love it. I love it because I'm able to provide courses, workshops, I'm able to network with different people, not just in my field, but people who are working in that community who mm -hmm. are trying to make a difference. Mm -hmm. So I love it. And if you are someone that's interested in it, you have to love networking. You have, I'm not saying you have to be a social butterfly, but you have to love making your impact on other people. And I feel like you need to have a really strong why you're doing this. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of time people do not have a strong, solid why. People mm -hmm. say, oh, I just want to be rich. Okay, but <laughs> I can't just do that. Just by, uh, like, you know, like, okay, why do you want to be rich? What is the purpose? <laughs> What's behind it? Mm -hmm. you know for me like I'm not that's not my goal is to be rich that's not the goal and you know and I am very flexible mm -hmm. um and it's really fun it's fun because you're teaching like who does not like teaching I love teaching mm -hmm. and it's a fun thing rewarding give ever because you are giving your gift to someone else for free mm -hmm. yeah you're right yeah um in your opinion how do you think uh the government can uh, support people like you I would say the government needs to increase the disability support program. Mm -hmm. I know that some disability uh, people may not be qualified for it because of certain qualification. I know I remember I had a friend and he didn't qualify for it. And I was like, why? And like, oh, because I have a, for them, do you need to be, I don't know what the term, I think you need to have like a really solid like disability to be qualified for it, but mm -hmm. that's ridiculous. For example, if you get into a car yeah. accident, mm -hmm. you don't claim to be disability. Like you need to have something that's wrong. Mm -hmm. And so we're just stuck that at the end of the day, things happen. Mm -hmm. Disability people should be going to the government for help. Mm -hmm. What's the point of you being on government? <laughs> we may help all well create our own doubt to be a government. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if you could speak to the prime minister today, what would you say? Of course, I would love to. I will say. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would love to. <laughs> um, the first thing I would say is we need to increase the income for those who are receiving disability support programs. Yeah. That's one. Mm -hmm. Two, we need better affordable housing for people who have disability, especially those who need a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of them live in a, a building that's not even supporting them. Mm -hmm. The elevator half the time don't work. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why is that? Yeah. yeah. And I feel like that needs to be addressed 100% housing, increase in the disability income, or even help those to get access to those benefits to get dental. Dentist is expensive. <laughs> I feel like it was expensive. I was like, oh, okay. Like, you know, I'm covered. I'm grateful for that. <laughs> But I just feel like there needs to be more coverage for people who have disabilities, not just dental, this, that. That's all you, we get. We never ask for this. Oh my God, if we ever ask God for anything, I'm pretty sure all of us would say, be Beyonce's daughter or JG's <laughs> daughter, Kanye West's daughter, Kim Kardashian to be my mom. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we never ask for this. Yeah. And like, it's enough, it's enough. Mm -hmm. Stop letting disability people struggle because. There's so much more that we have to go through in our plate that you don't even know. Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. I, I mean, there are programs and things in place, but there could be more. And um, if I were to speak to the prime minister, you know, I'd, I'd go deep. Maybe the conversation would go sideways, right? It, some of us don't dive to the core issue of what's happening. We see it. We fear it. We leave it. And we don't do anything about it out of respect of others uh, to not blame people or whatever it may be. But when we express our needs and things that needs to change, that shows our resilience and hunger to have a movement to change things in life and in our communities. Yeah, you're, about, about um, disability, my gosh, uh, mine is uh, invisible, <laughs> right? Uh, no one can tell I have schizophrenia unless I tell them or other diagnosis I have. I find that because it's invisible, therefore there's the misconception that, oh, it doesn't exist. That person seemed fine. Someone can be smiling and they're in pain. 
lots of it. So yeah, it, it's providing resources to, to those who need it and to also um, provide funding. <laughs> you know, the, those frontline workers that are breaking their spine every day to make sure this person doesn't die or things go well, uh, they, they deserve the, the respect and uh, the fun to do what they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you have any final thoughts? Anything else you'd like to share? I just wanted to say that no matter what life takes you, definitely keep moving. It's going mm -hmm. to be hard, but mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that it's not there. I'll give you an example. You had a dream from God, and he said, you have a month to live. Think about <laughs> it. Yeah. You will be living your best life. Live your best life to full. Do what makes you happy, not what anybody says. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Because so many of us are living in tomorrow when we're not, we're not really putting much effort to breathe and live and exist in the now. We're chasing something that is taking time. And at times that might be possible and impossible. It depends. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So where can my listeners find you and support the work that you're doing? Definitely. Everybody can find me on Instagram, Death Queen Boss, or my website, KalinaEmpowerment.com. And I would love for people to support me by buying my book on Amazon, mm -hmm. which you can search up Kalina Power, and my book will be the first one to see. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, Kalina, thank you so much for being on the podcast. It was truly an honor to meet you. And uh, keep shining, keep spreading love and light, and keep doing you. Thank you. Thank you.